morning. Welcome to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to be here in God's house this morning. We'd like to welcome our visitors who are here with us today. It's an honor that you're worshiping with us, and I pray you would come and be with us again very soon. Our worship service today is Divine Service Setting 4. It begins this morning in the front of your hymnal on page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. In the name of the earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? <coughs> but with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, we are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon it in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We pause for a moment of silent confession before our God. we confess. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a call to remain servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the singing of the intro, which you can find printed on this insert in your bulletin. <laughs>
Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom, prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we receive God's holy word. Sunday of the church here is from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I'll bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, on the rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the stray, I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock, and there shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjugation, subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted. Who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, the Son himself will also be subject, subjected to him. Who put all things in subjection under him that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise to honor our God in the hearing of his gospel. said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, then he will separate people one from another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers who did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? And then he will answer them saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, night of night, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated and we continue with the singing of our next hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this final Sunday of the church year comes from our gospel lesson. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. These are the words of our Lord that we will meditate upon this morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We confess, along with the entire Church Catholic, in the Apostles' Creed, that we believe that Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead. This is no less a part of our Christian faith as anything else. And yet, even though we say we believe it, we often don't live as though we believe it. We always believe that there will be a tomorrow. A tomorrow to give up that sin. A tomorrow to tell my unbelieving friend about Jesus. But if we believe that Jesus is indeed coming again, and we confess it, then we should truly understand it. What Jesus is telling us about his coming. Because when he comes again, he is coming in final judgment, and it is just that. Final. Some will be saved, some will be not. There will be the wise virgins, there will be the unwise. There will be the good and faithful servants, there will be the wicked and lazy servants. There will be the sheep, there will be the goats. Scripture tells us that God wants all men to be saved. But these parables that we have been looking at from our Lord Jesus over these last three Sundays of the church year tell us in no uncertain terms from the lips of Jesus himself that God will not get what he desires. All will not be saved. But it's not his fault, it's ours. Scripture tells us that hell is prepared for the devil and his angels, not for mankind. Nevertheless, Jesus tells us today in the parable that the goats, the unbelievers, will join the devil and his angels in that accursed place because they have refused the gift of grace and mercy and forgiveness given by and through our Lord Jesus Christ. In these last Sundays of the church year, we have been talking about Jesus' final coming in a lot of different ways from the parables that Jesus himself gave us. And today we learn something very important, that Jesus' final coming is irresistible. Listen to his words again that began our gospel lesson today. When the Son of Man comes, you see, there's no question about it. Scripture never says if the Son of Man comes. It says when the Son of Man comes. And this is something for all of us to keep stored in our memories as an irresistible fact. Now, life for us may go on happily every day. Or for some of us, it might be an uphill struggle every day. But no matter what, this life is good or this life is bad, it does not change the fact that one day Jesus is coming again. This we believe, this we confess. And when Jesus comes this last time, it will not be as he came the first time. He will not come lowly as a baby, weak and in a manger and at the mercy of evil and wicked men. No, when Jesus comes back, his final time, Scripture tells us that he is coming in power and authority. Jesus himself told us after his resurrection that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. No one, no one on earth will be exempt from his judgment. For the Scripture says all nations, will be gathered before him. Every person of all time 
will be there and there to be judged. Everyone will appear before King Jesus. This is a great and irresistible truth for you. May we therefore be spurred to be ready. Ready for his coming at all times. Lamp in or oil in our lamps, talents received, and as God's people redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, may we live every day and always with eternity in view. Jesus tells us today to know this, that his judgment is swift and final. And it is completely determined at the moment that he returns. The question, though, is this. On what will we be judged? Note in Jesus' parable today that the sheep and the goat separation takes place immediately upon his return before there is any enumeration of deeds, good or bad. On that day of his coming again, Jesus says all people, living and dead, will be raised and separated into one of two groups. We will be separated, he says, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will set the sheep on his right hand. He will set the goats on his left. So let us get right to the point of what Jesus is saying. Judgment day. When Jesus comes again, he will make it absolutely clear that there are only two kinds of people. Believers and unbelievers. Receivers or rejectors of God's truth and salvation in Jesus. There is no in between. There is no gray area. There will be no opportunity for you to make a last ditch change of mind. Either a person is a believer in the truth of God, believing that for Jesus' sake he or she has been made a child of God, forgiven and saved, Otherwise, he or she is an unbeliever who has said and will continue to say, I do not believe and I do not want it. And that person will go to everlasting hell. There are only two kinds, believers and unbelievers. Our prayer is that by God's grace and power, we will be numbered now and always among the believers. Take a look at what our gospel lesson says today about the receivers of God's truth, about believers, about those who have been made righteous before God through their faith in Jesus Christ, those who are righteous because they have received full and complete pardon of sin, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that was made for them and then given to them as a gift of eternal life through his resurrection. It tells us that these believers in Jesus Christ as their Savior are going to be recognizable. They are going to be recognizable to the whole world by their works of faith. They are the ones who in the name of Jesus and by the Spirit of God have cared for the stranger, who have clothed the needy, visited the sick and remembered the imprisoned. This is how faith shows itself. For Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. We know we know that good works do not save us, but they are an indispensable part of the life of the saved. They are a light, drawing people's attention to God. 
and the love that He has revealed in Jesus Christ and through us. The point is this, folks. Listen up. If there is true faith, there will be good works. For good works demonstrate and prove your faith. Also, Jesus says that when he comes, he will announce his verdict. And every human being who was, is, or will be, will be judged. Believer or unbeliever. And it says in the parable that there will be great amazement at all of this on both sides. We hear both believer and unbeliever saying to the Lord, to the judge, on that final day, when? When was it we ever had an opportunity to do these things for you that you spoke of? And that leads Jesus to say, I tell you the truth, whenever you did not do it for the one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. This is his word for the unbeliever, for the unrighteous. He says, you avoided serving others through your life, and in so you avoided serving me in faith. As a matter of fact, you had no faith. So you could not do works of faith to demonstrate. But to the believer, he says, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Think about that. What an amazing way that is for our Lord Jesus Christ to encourage us as he takes all of our little acts of service and love and kindness that we do in his name, and he says, look, in your faith, you're doing them for me. It's a service to me that you are serving my children. In the judgment of Jesus, our cheerful giving, our sharing, is a demonstration of Christian faith Faith that was given to us as a gift. And Jesus says, in faith, you're doing it all for me. And this truth gives great encouragement to we believers. And therefore we see for both sides that Jesus' verdict against unbelief is irresistible, it is final, and it is unchangeable. He goes on to say that on that last great or terrible day, he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed in the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. That's it. That is it for unbelievers. Depart. Leave. Leave me. Go away into everlasting condemnation because that is all that is left for you. You chose in life to be apart from me. Now you shall be apart from me forever. In sin, many do reject the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. Those who don't believe, who would rather follow Satan and his sinful, rebellious ways, will suffer the punishment decreed for the devil and for his angels. May God in his mercy keep us from such an end. Rather let us be among those of whom Jesus spoke when he talked about the believers. Come. Not depart, but come. Come you who are blessed by my Father Take your inheritance. What is that inheritance? The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. What a blessed word that is for us. What a great and wonderful truth for you and for me. I ask you this morning, do you feel discouraged? Do you feel wrung out by life? Do you feel like everything in your whole life 
just seems to be going against you and you never ever seem to catch a break. And that this world is just getting worse and worse every day and you just can't seem to expect any kind of happiness any time in the future. Even if you don't feel that all the time, I know all of us have felt that at one time or another. Well, here is an irresistible truth for you today. When the King comes again, all who have received Him as their Savior will be acknowledged as inheritors of life forever. He says, come. Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom. And that kingdom is ours because of Jesus. Because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Because that opened the way for all people to have their sins forgiven, to be washed clean, to wear the robe of His righteousness, to stand in the presence of Almighty God, holy and redeemed. And that is all ours. Because we are children of God, made so by God through His Word and His sacraments. Heaven and the new creation is our eternal destination. May we reach it safely by trusting in the Lord Jesus alone. When the Son of Man comes, Jesus' final coming is irresistible. We can't stop it from coming. And when he comes, his verdict is already set and the door will be shut. The unbelievers will go into everlasting punishment. That verdict is as irresistible as it is terrifying. But the believer, the believer will go into eternal life Life in the presence of God, seeing Him as He is face to face in all of His glory because the blood of Jesus Christ has washed us clean from our sin and made us holy. And we will know only joy and delight. We will be at home. We will be at home. And we won't be able to sin anymore. There will be no sin left in us to resist that wonderful and undeserved gift of grace from God through faith in Jesus Christ. So my friends, pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit will always keep you in faith so that you may stand on that last great day in the merits of Jesus Christ at the irresistible coming of our Lord and share in the joy of eternal life, the life that He has won for you. And in joy, we can respond to that. Amen. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Along with the prayer assisted in your bulletin for today, we've had these special prayer requests for Pam Cochran, who will be undergoing back surgery tomorrow. We also pray for Ellen Schmidt and her family upon the passing of her mother, Ellen Caldwell. Let us rise now as we lift our prayers and praises to God our Father. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all the people of God, that they may always be prepared for the Son of Man to return in glory by continually being kept safe and secure in the Lord's flock, where they are fed and nourished by His word and sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all who are scattered and gone astray, that by the power of the Holy Spirit they may be returned to the fold before Christ returns to judge the living and the dead. Let us pray to the Lord. For all pastors in Christ, including John Jenkins, Carl Beckwith, and Fred Reinhardt, that they may remain ever faithful in proclaiming our death in Adam and our resurrection in Christ as we ever look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Let us pray to the Lord. For all missionaries, especially the Federwitz family, that they would be faithful in their sharing of the true gospel to the world, that those who are lost in the darkness of sin and false hope 
may come to the assurance of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all in authority, that even as the kingdoms of this world are passing away, they may be granted wisdom and protection as they carry out their duties. Let us pray to the Lord. For the hungry, that they may be granted daily bread as they need of it, and that the Lord's servants may be moved to provide for them, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are in prison, that they may be granted those who are willing to visit them with the gospel of peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the sorrowing, the mourning, and all of those who are in need of your care, including this morning Pam and Kay, Willard and Linda, Cindy, Terry, Joanne, Chris, Carly, Alan, Dorothy, Pam, and the family of Ellen, and all of those we now lift up before you in our hearts. That they may be granted healing in body and soul, and that they would be granted comfort to visit them in affliction. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all of those who receive the Lord's body and blood this day, that they may be granted eternal life and resurrection on the last day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. And for the faithful departed, that we remember them with thankfulness and look forward to the day when we are reunited with them in the world to come, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and to your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament found beginning on page 208. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruit of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, the night which was betrayed to bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. 